So we will create an interface, and we're going to call this interface pair. And what are interfaces? Interfaces are something that can act like a, like a parent of the class. And uh, they can force the class to write certain behaviors because they're incomplete. So in this interface, I will have two data types, k and v. But right now, they're, they're unknown. Nobody knows what they stand for. And I'll say, I want one method to return a k and I want another method to return a v. So v is short for value and k is short for key. So it's a key value pair. So that I have this interface that does that for me. Now, I will create a class. The class I'm going to call ordered pair. which will going to implement the interface. So I'm going to click add button here, add. Which interface am I adding? The pair interface, which comes from the default package. So notice it brings pair with kv as the data types. Make sure you check public static void main and also inherited abstract methods. Check both. And click OK, finish. So now, the ordered pairs, now click on add on unimplemented methods if it didn't actually add those for you, okay? So we have a k get key and we have a v get value. These are the two methods we have. Now, what's complaining about right now is, if you bring your mouse over k and you bring your mouse over v is, it says the k and the v, I don't understand where they're coming from. Yes, they're coming from the parent, but the local class has no declaration of them. So you go up to your class, ordered pair, and you say kv. So now it knows, oh, so the k from the parent is also a k over here, and a v from the parent is also a v over here. So that's how you basically map them. Now, just for the sake of understanding, I'm going to push the main outside. So I'm going to delete the main. Let me create two members. As I told you earlier, that we're also going to learn how you can do two members with the different data types. So one is K and one is V. So we have getters for each one of them. And now we're going to create a constructor of the class. So, so far what we have done is we created an interface which allows us to declare two data types, k and v. We brought that interface into our local class and we mapped the kv to the kv. And for each one of them we have a getter and a setter, uh, sorry, uh, we have getters. And they are the two properties of the class with different data types. Now we're going to create a third class in which we're going to create instances of ordered pair type and each instance will allow you to have more than one data types. So we're going to create a new class here. We're going to call this one use ordered pair. This time with the public static void main. And now this is where I will going to create an instance of ordered pair type. And remember, it, it requires two data types, k and v. So I'll say I want my k to be string, and I want my v to be an integer. This is my pair one, new ordered pair. Again, first parameter string, second parameter integer. And I want them to be even and eight. So the name of my key is even, and the value is eight create another object of type uh, ordered pair called p2 and I'm going to call this one 
prime and the value will be 11. Now let me display these items. System dot out dot print ln pair one key p1 dot get key pair one value p1 dot get value Similarly, I will copy and paste this one for P2. Instead of returning null, I should actually return key and return value. Thank you. Okay. So... And now run it again, and now you should be able to get your output. There is one more thing I would like to do over here is, do you guys remember dynamic polymorphism? What is dynamic polymorphism? It allows one class object to call the constructor of another class. So an object of interface type or a pointer of interface type can also be used to point to any constructor that implements it. Or a pointer of a parent type can also call a constructor of the child type. This is called dynamic polymorphism. The reason is because this data type is not known at compile time. During runtime, it makes these links. So very similarly, Using the dynamic polymorphism, I can very well change this ordered pair object to just be of pair type. Because remember, pair is an interface that ordered pair implements. So I can create a pointer of pair type to call the constructor of ordered pair type. So now if you run it, the output will going to be exactly the same. So you can create an object of a type from a constructor of another type only under these two situations where the object type is of a parent or the object type is of an interface.